your business is in sync with that sync. This webinar is powered by LiveSync Accounting and Zero Accounting Software. Introducing Attorney Dexter Destajo. Financial reporting, no? Generation. So, Access report dashboard, what are the type of management report that is common that you send to the management? So profit and loss balance sheet, statement of account, cash summary, aging receivable, pay, aging payable. So this is a standard if you're an accountant and you're using zero and your uh, business, your, your boss or the management would require you a management of financial report. This is the management report package. Normally you would pick out from zero and send this to them at the end of the month. Or after the end of the month you can also set accounts grouping you can export the report you can also track report you can run a report per tracker let's look at new reports very quickly and then what are other reports in zero and then limitations and applications so let's go to that dashboard so to generate your to find the reports for zero you go to accounting menu and click reports so in reports you have all these reports available to you. Question, can I have additional report that is not here? The answer is no, because zero only provides the report what is given here. Okay, if it's not, then either you try to work, come up with a workaround, find the nearest report, and then, you know, click that in your Excel, or otherwise, you know, it's not really there. Now, when you are ticking the star here, this would be included in your report favorite so in this second part of your accounting menu these are your account your report favorite so for me i would include the balance sheet the profit and loss the sales stock report age payables and uh, age receivable i would add also cash summary here and then i would add also statement of cash flow so basically these are my standard package report okay except for the sales stock Let's try to explore profit and loss. But what I would do is I would explore the old reports because the old reports are more, has more filtering uh, capability compared to the new reports. So profit and loss here, you can do many things on this report. As a default, this is a common format. Will it actually compare you the last three periods with the year to date total at the end? You can compare previous three months period. You can compare year to date, so to 2020 and 2019, month to date progress. Okay, I can expand this. Current financial year, so from June 27, of oh, nothing. Okay, it's, it's not showing anything because there's no budget. Actual overall budget is also empty. I have no budget here. So yes, you can do comparative budgets. Compare branches, yes, you can compare branches, branch one, branch two, and unassign those that are, have no assignment. And then compare departments also, you can do that as well. And department one, department two. And these are the transactions that are not being assigned, which you need to adjust and assign it properly to what department. Why? Because these employee allowances and wages, as we know later, are earlier, a limitation in the parent is that it does not allocate you automatically the right tra tracking category. So you have to do it manually. Another thing you can do is you can create the layout. The layout you can create would mean allows you to group your accounts. No? So the chart of accounts of zero is very flat. Yeah, very flat. They are on same level. So, But what you can do is you can actually group accounts, similar accounts. So let's say I would do this and then group employee allowance and wages as HR, HR expenses. I can click and create that as a group. I would say HR expenses as a group. Then I would place that under operating expenses. You have an option either 
direct cost here, you would put it here or in the income, but obviously wages is operating expenses. You have an option to show summary or not. So I would not show summary because I wanted to see the breakdown of the accounts per group. I click that, I put the name, standard. Okay, it's up to you, you can actually use the So I saved this report. So what would happen is this would be my. Um, so see what happened is you were able to group a similar account to its group, right? Um, you can edit that grouping as well. Um, we can edit and then add another group for what you call um, for admin expenses. So let's say admin expenses. These are my admin expenses, legal lighting, motor vehicle, office expenses, and then printing, and then rent. Okay, all this. And then I group again, I would say admin expenses, expenses group. And then operating expenses. So what I would do is I would show it summary only, meaning I would don't want to see the breakdown of this. And this is true when you have a very long chart of accounts and you don't and you want to shorten your PNL report no so then you are you know uh, condensing your report uh, instead of a long report it will have a short report so this is the difference now so here the admin is compacted because we're doing a summary but your HR because we don't do a summary it shows a breakdown here but if you click this amount you will see the number as broken down to the specific PNL accounts. Okay. Uh, my favorite report would be doing like this. I will compare period, and then I say I want to see monthly report, and I wanted to compare this if to towards the end of the year, of uh, the beginning of the year. So five five months because the June is the sixth month, and then I would say total. So when I run a report, so me to the management, this is. And then, sorry, I will have to, no filter. So then I would want to show that this is June, the performance now, and then compared to the previous one, and this is the total PNL right now. And then I can export this in Excel, or I can export this in, in PDF. So Excel, it would look like this. Yep. And then your PDF would, would look like this. Nice. Okay. So you can do that. So that's PNL. You can play around. You can want you want to see only branch one. It's fine. So you have a comparative month to month by branch one only. Okay. You can do that. Now let's do balance sheet. So balance sheet, the same thing. You have that same flexibility. With balance sheet, the difference is, is that um, you're using balance sheet account, obviously. So the position of your financial position of your business. So this is your balance sheet as of June 30. And then you can actually create, report a balance sheet per category. So this is something very unique. So normally, um, you can only do profit centers on PNL, but now you can also do this in zero in your balance sheet. Okay, if you want to compare balance sheet of all uh, uh, another branch, you then select. Okay, but you cannot, unlike PNL, you cannot compare per cut tracking category. When you're running a report, you have only to select a particular branch, okay, to see the, the, the balance sheet for each of these branches. Otherwise, I would do no filter and I'll see all my balance sheet in one line. Okay. The same thing, you can compare previous year, last year, and so normally when I submit a balance sheet, this is the format that I would do. Um, the current month and then the last year, and I would compare that. You know? And then you can also do layout, the same thing, what we did in PNL. So that is also an option for you. You can group them. If you have a very long and flat chart of accounts, you would need to group them together, summarize or not summarize them. And then the same with PNL, you can also export that as 
uh, Excel and PDF. So that's balance sheet. Next would be um, age receivable report. So age receivable report, oh, we're showing you many times already in our demo. So it will tell us um, the breakdown per invoice per customer when I take the show invoices. So at any time you can change the date. You can age by date, invoice date or due date. You can also show by month or number month. So here, if I'm doing month here, you can also a number of month. So current month, two months before, three months, it's an option. The same is true with your accounts payable. Again, I would always want to send a report with show invoices so that especially for payable so that the management would know what are outstanding and still unpaid asset. Now take note, this number here would match to your balance sheet always, huh? Um, let me just show you this one. So your balance sheet in accounts payable, 1.106200, which is actually the same number here, okay? So that would always match the same with accounts receivable that would also match. Now, another would be report would be um, statement of cash flow. Now, statement of cash flow, unfortunately, you cannot separate per category. Um, the presentation here would, because this is a new report, you would have only a single, I don't know if I can actually, ah, I can now. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, it's the first time I realized this. So you can actually create a separate so now in zero, you can you can now use zero, uh, track PNL balance sheet and cash flow statement per category. So if I want to say branch one, what is the balance sheet? What is the cash flow? And what's the PNL of the uh, of that branch? I can actually use this now. What also it means is, if you are really want to, there's another way. For example, you have a lot of business unit. You can run this financial report as a tracking category and run all these financial reports separately. Statement of cash flow balance sheet and PNL. Okay, this is amazing. You can actually create that. So um, you can edit layout. Okay, now the method of you can still do groupings here, that's fine. But additional flexibility with the new report is that you can drag and drop the position of this report. You can go bring this up, okay, and then create another group. So maybe I'll do another group selection here. And then I can do also formula. Um, I don't know if it's showing for, oh no, it's not. It does not give us formula. And then uh, I'll discard this. Let's do the new report of the balance sheet. No, PNL. Let's do PNL. Uh, PNL new report. So what's the difference? So new report of PNL. So it has a different look for the new report. Okay, my problem here is I, I have uh, less uh, filtering uh, flexibility, so I don't really use this often. But you know the interface is very nice. Um, I'm not also using. I'm not. Although you have more flexibility in the layout here because you can actually create for formula. Uh, let me see if I wanted, for example, uh, another group. Uh, see, I can do groups here and then. And then I would say EBITDA, for example, I can create here, no? And then I will have totals, so where is that EBITDA? I would bring it here. And then maybe I would have interest expenses here. Then I have my depreciation also here. So I can do that. There's more flexibility now. Interest in tax expense also I can break down here. So yeah, I can separate that and then, you know, you can make more grouping, more flexible also in the layout. But I don't really use this often. I'd prefer using the old report. Okay, and let's go. Now, cash summary is another summary. So many of small businesses use this report. Why? Because this gives them the snapshot of the cash. Now, for small businesses, it's not important for them, the accrual. No? It's not very important. What's important for them is they want to see the cash position of their uh, of their business. So here, this is like a PNL, but a cash basis PNL. It will tell us how much cash you receive for that period, regardless whether when you invoice it or approve it. 
It will tell us also how much you spend for non-operating, the equity movement, and also tax movements as well. And then the beauty of this report, again, you can also compare this as much as how many periods you would want. If you want to show that the money you receive includes the tax as well, the VAT tax, so then I'll highlight that. So this amount would include already the VAT on this amount. And then what you spend includes already the VAT. And then what is important, very nice about this report is this summary below. So this would tell you that you have an opening balance and then the net movement for that period, which is this, and then your closing balance. And then this closing balance would match to your balance sheet. And the breakdown of that is your PT cash and the Banco de Oro. So you see 297 here, 297. So it, normally the question of the business owner is this, okay, so what if I have 297 in my bank and in my petty cash? Why I did have this already when I started with 500, why is this 297 only? Your answer would be the cash summary, okay? And that is a very common question from small businesses. Although you started at 500, your cash is only 297 because we spend a lot for your operating expenses of 173, your non-operating, we spend 173 also. And then the money that came in is only 144. That answers the question. So this particular report is very important for small businesses as well. Because they would want to see their cash position rather than their accrual performance. No? And then finally, um, you just play around with all other reports. I'm just going to show you the very basic reports here. More financial reports. You can play that around. Fixed asset, pay run, inventory, and all other things here. You can play that around.